All right, we're here with a test device where Elgrim is wearing the uh, tatami armor uh, from Iron Mountain Armory. And just like he did in the video where we actually fought with it, we used padded weapons. I had the uh, katana, the Vulcan here, and I had it padded. This time we have a katana that is not padded. This is just a hardwood uh, Vulcan. Uh, he's wearing the dough here. He's wearing the entire uh, armor, actually, from head to toe. And we're going to do some testing and see on a live person how much force he can take. Because in the other video, like we said, we had a little padding on it. He did take some blows. He said they were really hard, but the armor seemed to help. So well, I'm going to call out. it the cutoff where I can't handle it no more. Right. So I'll kind of go with a light blow and work our way up. We'll yeah, we'll take it up until I, until I call it. And then we'll Correct. say what. And then see how it works out. All right. Here we go. Uh, what was that, like 10, 20 That was very light. All right, very light. All right. Ah! Creased the, uh, the Karuda a little bit, got bent a little bit, it creased a little bit. How did it feel? That was all right. Take One a more. little harder. Ah! Creased another Karuda side. How did it feel? All right. Those are some hard shots, actually. All right. How do you feel? Good. I did, think I can do one more. Do you think more. it injured you in any way? Or? Oh, yeah. I'm going to have some bruising, but I think I can do another one. Where do you want to get hit, though? Probably not the exact same spot. A little more straight on. Yeah. yeah. I'll try to get a little more, more power and see what happens here. Ah! How do you feel? You can feel it. <laughs> oh! Oh! No internal injuries or anything like that. Nope. But they did help protect you, the actual point. Woo! And you, I'll tell you what, what was that? What was your last shot? What would you call that? Like, uh, I mean, they're not like I'm swinging a baseball bat. They're like I'm trying to cut with a katana. So I'm trying to slice into you. I would say they're good, I don't know, 80, 90%. I mean, they're a hair off to like if I'd really like, you know, oh, you know, but not right. like anybody be attacking you on the field with that kind of ferocity unless they knew they could hit because otherwise I would be leaving myself open. Yeah, that. You and I wouldn't be able to defend afterwards. That's a, that would be a decent cut on the field. Uh, I got some bruising, that's for sure, in the in the body. Um, you know, you can definitely see where the wherever the plates have increased, that's where I'm going to be uh, the most bruised. Yeah. Uh, I really feel like uh, beyond the bruising and the, and the minor minor injury, it would be a lot worse if I just hit you when you're standing there in a, let's say I stay a, a yeah a kimono or something. No doubt, uh, I don't doubt it for a minute. Yeah, you got some actual creases in the plates. So they actually absorbed a lot of the energy because they got hit. Mm -hmm. We can bend yeah. them back, but I mean, they bit some from the impact. I'm curious what this is going to do against the edges. So. All right. Uh, well, all right, let's move on to the next test. Let's test like maybe the shoulder and the arm or something. Yeah, let's get it going. All right. The uh, Boken seemed to perform pretty well there. We got a nice blow through it. I could definitely feel it, but it helped absorb the impact. I'm going to bump it up a little bit because I know this Joe here is actually a lot stouter, it's a little bit heavier, uh, it has more uh, mass to it, and traditionally this was something that was pretty much, uh, I mean it's a weapon that was everything, I mean it acted like the spear, it acted like the bow staff, it acted like the uh, naginata, I mean pretty much all the techniques get incorporated with this weapon, and it was actually a common weapon somebody would be walking around with or might have, just because they could use it anywhere, it's just a stick, it's a walking stick. But I mean, basically all the weapons in the martial arts get incorporated into the Joe and the techniques with it. So, real common Japanese thing. And this one, I mean, is this is like a can of bomb. This thing's heavy. Yeah, so it we're is. Gonna that's do stout. Here, yeah, this is hard wood. ash, right? It's ash, yes. That's right, so that's, that's I don't know how Japanese ash would be, but. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, take We're going to take some shots at this. Yeah, uh, and go ahead and see what we can do. Shoulder here. All right, man, I'm ready wherever you are. All right. Ah! Crank it up a little more. It? A little more. Ah! One more. I got one more? One more. Ah! I hit you one more good one. One more good one. Ah! Oh, that one bit the plates. How do you feel there? Yeah, that one was tough, man. That hurt. Yeah, that was pretty solid. Those are definitely solid shots, you can tell. But the plates are definitely helping, even though they're a little lighter coverage, but they're on the outside where you really need them. Yeah, I think so I'm going to have bruises holding, that... If you were holding your weapon, 
uh, you're holding your weapon to defend yourself, this would be all protected out here. Mm -hmm. I think that was the main thing that the Japanese are worried about. And if you had your uh, Sode, which we don't have the Sode, they do sell those as well, I believe, from uh, JapaneseArmor.com or SamuraiArmor.com, you can get those. The Sode would yeah, be very useful. Yeah, then you have useful. the full shoulder protection. Mm -hmm. And extra protection on top of this. So uh, I'm I'm see have... how this alone does a good job. Uh, I'll tell you on the shoulder, I'm going to have bruises corresponding to where the bent blades are. Oh, yeah, well, certainly. That really hurt, that last one, man. Let's move on to some live testing. Yeah, let's do some live steel. Yes. That'd be good. All right, we've been doing testing with us uh, right now, and we've determined that I don't think we're going to be able to cut through these type of plates. It's just not happening. You're not going to get a cut through them. Uh, but we're curious uh, how it'll behave against an actual edge striking the metal. And since we don't have an analog for this, he's decided we're just going to try it on here with a light blow and see how it works against the actual... Uh, the forearm or the techo. Yeah, so well, we're gonna we're gonna step up the game and go with live steel blade. Oh, most certainly. So we have our good Musashi here. And I'm going to be very careful with this, so this will be a controlled cut to this area, or, or actually uh, uh, getting set up here right where I'm hitting what I want to hit. Of course, he wouldn't have that luxury in battle, but I'm gonna go ahead and give it a whack and see how it actually behaves. All right, man. Ready. How did it feel? Oh, not great, but it didn't break my arm or anything, so that's kind of good. We have some light scoring or cutting into the metal, but the bending, because the way these are shaped, actually absorb the damage, correct? Yeah. So as you would think, we didn't cut any of the fabric whatsoever. Well, we bent the actual uh, splints, but it didn't cut into his arm. Well, yeah, I think the splints having, to, having this arch in them that we have here Right, right, absorbs yeah. a lot of the energy on the way down as it's Them bending. Them being a lighter gauge metal. Mm -hmm. The Japanese try to go for, on this specific type of armor, this was for lightness. This is something that a shinobi no mano, or what we would call modernly a ninja, or an ashigaru, or maybe a samurai wearing light gear would actually wear. That's right. So, it's something for that kind of occasion. It's where you want mobility, but you still want something that would stop a cut or an impact and keep you from dying, possibly. Even if you were injured, it, you would not die there in the field and just bleed out and have your whole arm sliced off. So I have no doubt without this on, we would have actually sliced into his arm and maybe tipped through the bone. Or he might have actually lost his arm. So it yeah. would have been a scenario you would not want to encounter in the field. No doubt about it. But, you know, it saved my arm on that cut. Oh, most uh, certainly. You know, I, I can see some scoring. You see how bad the bend was. That was actually a really smart shot. Yeah, so. I, I was trying not to be too extreme, but I was trying to give a decent cut like if I was trying to cut. Well, I have to say and, that... And we did cut uh, one of the lacings. It's it sliced in several different places. We actually cut through one of the lacing spots, but it still adhered uh, fast to the actual uh, uh, silk undergarment. Yeah, not bad. Yeah, I'm impressed. Not bad at all. I'll say from a medium shot. Oh, most certainly. All right, we're back after that test. We feel quite confident. We're going to check out the Synopte. The actual uh, splitted leg guard. Uh, they look like a little bit wider, but it still looks like it's a good protective uh, covering for the splints. Uh, and they've got the same bend in them. So we might try a little harder shot. Not, not too much nice. harder because this is a real edge. So we don't want to accidentally injure Elgrim for real, but we want to test it with a good enough blow that it would be a cut we know would injure the leg or incapacitate the warrior. I mean, possibly go straight through the bone. So. Ready. Up! How's it feel? That wasn't half bad. You could almost hit it again. I will try one more time. I don't want to hit quite in the middle because I don't want to accidentally miss. Ay! How's it feel? Oh, I'll admit it. It does not feel awesome, but it... It stopped the edge. It stopped the blow. I'm going to have a bruise on that shin, though, that's for sure. And we have a razor sharp edge, so uh, it is stopping this Japanese steel trying to cut through the uh, Japanese armor. Mm, so it yeah. did what it was supposed to do. Oh, that, that smacked me good, dude. Yeah. That was a good one. That was a good one. Yeah, but they did their job. That's the that's, that's for sure. I think we did enough of the live steel testing on uh, uh, actual real analogs. Of all, <laughs> all the live subjects. Yeah, on a live subject. That's, that's really but the we, That's the only way we need to test this properly. And we, of course, we could have thrown a lot more power, but we're trying to be safe here. It put a, probably could have stopped the more powerful blow, 
but you've got a lot more bruising and possibly uh, uh, maybe uh, injured bone or something. Because I mean, you're, you can get enough force behind a katana to actually crack a bone. I mean, to I mean push yeah. fracture a bone. So we got to be careful with that sort of thing. Yeah, well, I'd, I'd say between all of them on the on me, uh, between the doe, the the shoulder, the forearm, the uh, sonate, I think all of it is holding up pretty well. I wouldn't I wouldn't say you know a hundred percent. I'm definitely going to feel this in the morning. Right, but it saved you from otherwise situations, that, especially like the real edge that would have probably been uh, uh, a serious wound. Well, let me they say this. Incapacitated. It stopped the first one to let you live to fight another day. Most certainly. You so you if, could. If, if he got that in, you might have been able to finish. There you go. You would have been able to retaliate. That might be the one finish. time let you have that counterattack. And I think that's the that's sort of the principle here. So, so far, I'm highly impressed for how thin the metal is and how strong and durable it is, and the shape, how it actually makes a difference, and how it's put together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I do. I think so. It's time to put this on a dummy, though, and get me and out of And try some real cutting. Yeah, yeah not the real dummy, yeah. not me. <laughs>